Have you ever wondered how old the universe actually is? If you have, you're not alone. The greatest minds in human history have been debating about it for a while now. But what do you think? Do you think the age of our universe is infinite? Billions of years old? Millions? You might say something like this if you're into science. Or maybe the answer you thought of was a lot smaller. Like, say, a few thousand years, based on what you read in the Bible. Which leads me to my next question. For all the Christians watching this video right now, have you ever read through the first chapter of the book of Genesis, or sat through a science documentary and found yourself wondering, Wow, there's no way God could have created all of this in just six days. Could he? No matter what sort of answer you currently have to this question, this video is going to try and give you that answer. This video is going to challenge your worldview and have you think outside of the box. This video is going to answer the age-old question that we have been debating over for centuries. Was the universe created in six days? This video is going to have three sections. The first section is going to sort of define the two main views that have to do with this issue. The second section is going to take a quick look at some of the evidence that supports both of these views. And the third section is going to close with the reasonable answer to this question that I believe all Christians should keep in mind when studying the creation story. But before we begin, let's take one more look at this question. Was the universe created in six days or longer? Well, let's get started. So to make things simple, there are pretty much only two possible answers to this question. Either God did create everything in six days, or he didn't. It might sound silly, but these two possibilities make up the two most popular theories about the creation story in the Bible. The idea that God took longer than six days to create the universe is known as Old Earth Creationism, while the idea that God took six days to create the universe is known as Young Earth Creationism. I know, I know, some of you watching this might be saying, well in the book of Genesis it clearly states that God created everything in six days and rested on the seventh, and the Bible is perfect in every way, so clearly the Young Earth Creationism is the only way to the truth. And you know what? I absolutely, without a doubt, believe that the Bible is perfect in every way. And I also do believe that the book of Genesis clearly says everything was created in six days in the English translation. But some people who believe in an older universe say the original Hebrew language in Genesis suggests that God may have taken much more time while creating the universe. In fact, this is actually where the entire debate started, the original Hebrew language. It's a lot less complicated than you might think though. You don't need to speak fluent Hebrew to understand this. All you have to know is one simple word. Yom. Yom is the original Hebrew word that was used for the word day in the book of Genesis. So when the Bible talks about the first day where God created the heavens, the earth, light and dark, the first day was actually called the first Yom in the original version of Genesis. So why is this important? Well, the word Yom has been used in the Bible to describe a much longer period of time than a regular 24-hour day. Old Earthers who believe in an older universe say that if the Bible has used Yom to talk about a longer time frame than one day, then isn't it also possible that in Genesis, the word Yom is used to describe a longer type of day as well? If so, how much longer could it be? No one really knows, but the point is this. Old Earthers see the word day in the book of Genesis as a much longer time than just 24 hours. Young Earthers, on the other hand, keep it very simple. They take a very literal meaning of this word in the Bible. They say that there are plenty of places in the Bible where the word Yom is used to describe a 24-hour period. 
In fact, young earthers say that out of the 2,301 times that the word Yom is used in the Bible, most of the time it is used to describe a normal 24-hour day. Therefore, it would only make sense to interpret the days in Genesis as six separate 24-hour cycles. So before we go on, let's do a quick recap. Old earthers believe that Yom is used to describe a longer day, while young earthers believe that Yom is used to describe a normal 24-hour day. So now that you know the difference between these two views, let's get into only some, only some of the evidence that supports both of them. Let's start with the old earth theory. This is probably the more popular view in the world right now, mainly because it matches up with what science teaches us in the public school system. Which brings me to the first piece of evidence I want to look at. Science. Most people nowadays believe the universe is billions of years old, and there is a lot of scientific evidence to support this idea. The scientific evidence for an old universe is massive. Some of it you might already be familiar with, and to be honest, it's way too much to go over in one video. But here are just a few things to think about. Fossilized creatures, carbon dating, ancient material dating back more than 10,000 years ago, the expansion of the universe, other cosmological evidence. I'm not going to dive into all of these things, but I'll put some links in the description below if you're interested in learning more about them. But the important thing to know is this. Old earthers believe that the overwhelming amount of scientific evidence proves that God chose to take a much longer time to create the universe rather than just six normal days. One other piece of evidence that supports an old universe takes place on the sixth day of creation. On this day, the Bible tells us that Adam was able to identify and name every living animal on the earth. If the sixth day really was only 24 hours, then that's pretty impressive, if not impossible. And that's exactly what old earthers say. There is no way Adam would have been able to catalog thousands of species in just a 24 hour time period. Unless this day was actually a hundred years, or a thousand years, or even a million years. Then this wouldn't be a problem now, would it? If Adam had all of that time to name all of the animals, then this part of Genesis would make a lot more sense. Of course, there are other problems with this too, like how could Adam have lived that long, or wouldn't the animals have died out with all of that extra time? But anyway, that's getting a little off topic there. The fact is that old earthers believe that it was impossible for Adam to name every single animal in just a 24 hour period. Therefore, the word day must have been describing a much longer time frame. The last piece of evidence I'll mention in this video for an older universe is actually based more on common sense than anything else. It has to do with the fourth day. You see, it wasn't until the fourth day that God made the sun and moon in order to separate day and night. So here's the question. How could there be three days before the sun and moon existed if the sun and moon are the very things that separate day and night? Well, once again, the old earthers say that it's simple. The word yom didn't mean 24 hours. It meant a period of time. If the word day here actually means a period of time, then it wouldn't matter if the sun and the moon were created later. But that's enough of the old earthers for a moment. Let's now take a look at the young earthers who believe in a regular six day creation. The first piece of evidence we are going to look at is actually, once again, science. You know how the old earthers have a whole bunch of scientific evidence that convinces them the universe is billions of years old? Well, young earthers also have a bunch of evidence to support their views as well. Here's a few of them. Unreliable carbon dating, the Earth's young magnetic field, soft tissue and ancient fossils, lunar recession, and many others. Again, I'll put some links in the description below the video in case you want to learn more about them. But the important thing to know is that there is some reliable evidence out there that does a good job of questioning what science usually teaches us. 
Whether or not it's true is up for you to decide. The next piece of evidence we'll cover is actually found in scripture and takes place in the time of Moses in Exodus chapter 20 verses 9 through 11. In this part of the Bible, God commands Moses to use the six creation days in Genesis as an example of how we should live a typical work week and is still widely used today. In other words, because God worked for six days and rested on the seventh in the beginning of creation, we too should work for six days and rest on the seventh day, which is known as the Sabbath. So why would God command his people to work for six 24-hour days if he himself took millions of years in creating the universe? Young Earthers say this would mean God did not set a good example for us to follow in the beginning, which would mean that God is flawed which is not possible. So the only explanation for this is that God actually did take six 24-hour days to create the universe so that we would have a perfect example to follow in our normal work week. The last piece of evidence for young earthers that I'm going to mention in this video has to do with Romans chapter 5 verse 12, where Paul teaches that death entered the world after sin. But if the universe really is millions of years old, then wouldn't the creatures on earth have died during this long period of time? Well, of course they would. But this was way before sin entered the world in Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man. This would contradict Romans chapter 5 verse 12, which teaches that death didn't happen until after the fall of man. So it would only make sense that the events in the creation story happened during six 24-hour days, which gives Adam and Eve a more reasonable amount of time to sin before the creatures began to die out. So those were three pieces of evidence on each side of the argument. But please keep in mind that there is still so much more out there that wasn't included in this video. And for each argument that you can think of, there is probably already a counter-argument to go along with it. But now, let's go ahead and finish the video and revisit the original question. But this time, I'll give you an answer. So here it goes. Was the universe created in six days? The answer is... Maybe. <laughs> I'm really sorry if that's disappointing for you to hear. But I have to be honest with you all. There is absolutely no way for us to know without a shadow of a doubt whether or not the universe was created in six days or whether it was created over thousands of years or millions of years or billions of years. It's an age old question we will always be searching for. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay to be debating over this question for many more years because it's not the question we should be asking. We shouldn't be asking whether or not the universe was created in six days or longer. Instead, the question we should be asking is this. Was it God who created the universe? And the answer to that is absolutely. You see, the Bible wasn't written to give us all the answers that we want to know. It was written to give us all the answers that we need to know. And we really don't need to know whether or not God took six days, six thousand years, or six billion years to create the universe. The only reason we want to know this is because it's in our nature to learn. That's the way God created us. In other words, it's our flesh that wants to know the answers to everything. But our spirit should only need to answer to faith. Faith is the belief in those things that we cannot see. And while we may not be able to actually see the length of time God used to create the universe, what we can see is the finished product, the beauty of nature, the mystery of the cosmos, or the perfection of life. That alone should be enough. The final product of God's creation is enough to convince us that it was done by His hands. Psalm 19 tells us that the sky itself reveals God's glory. Creation itself is sufficient enough evidence to show us that there is a Creator. And even if the sky can't speak for itself, and the oceans are unable to shout, and the land of the earth cannot cry out, the message is still loud and clear. The universe was created by God. 
Hello everyone. I really hope that this video spoke to you in some way. And thank you so much for listening until the end. I want to ask you to please make sure to share this video with others. There are still so many people out there that do not believe in God simply because they cannot find any explanations to questions like this. And although this video may not be able to convince people that God is real, maybe it'll plant a seed in their spirit, or at least help them respect God's word more than they used to. If you liked this video, make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons underneath, and check out some of the other videos this channel has to offer too. Also, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below, but please do so in a respectful manner. Once again, thank you so much for watching, God bless you all, and stay tuned for the next video.